Well, look, I wondered why I was speaking uh, before morning tea, and I realised that, considering we're having custard tarts and, uh, <laughs> and vanilla slice, that was to get people's mind off the previous uh, presentation. Uh, but really, it is interesting. I'm going to revise how I uh, inject my sheep. Look, uh, can I personally say, uh, Bruce Scott, the uh, Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives and Nutfield Scholar, as you know, uh, said to pass on uh, his best wishes for the conference. He wishes he could be here. Uh, and he's retiring at the next uh, election. So leaves me as the last Nutfield Scholar in the Parliament, but uh, I'm hoping that there will be more that will come through. Uh, and look, and I just want to pay tribute to Joel Fitzgibbon. We did share a car on the way here, uh, and it was quite good to have a conversation. I mean, it is important that we have people who have a passion for agriculture on many spheres of the political um, political landscape because, frankly, we won't always be in government. Uh, we may will be in opposition, and it is important that we have people that have an understanding and affinity and a passion for our industry. Uh, it's quite interesting, adapting to change. What a topic, given the last week. <laughs> Look, change is interesting. So uh, change does happen upon you very quickly. I know as a young man I had the three most important things that a young man has to have in his house. Uh, that's a fridge, a microwave and a television. And you would get the frozen pizza out of the fridge, you would put it in the microwave and then you would sit down and watch television. And then I remember on the uh, 8th of February 1997 I saw this good looking sword across the room and I went over and introduced myself to her. And uh, then, in June 1999, not far from here, actually just up, just up on Monument Hill in Albury, I uh, popped the question and she decided she was going to marry me. Uh, that was Rachel, 15 years later. And uh, it was a change. It was a change. Now, she was a wise country girl. And she said to me, you know, Andrew, when we were renovating the house, she said, $10,000 doesn't go very far at all when it comes to buying farm chemicals goes a very long way in the kitchen. <laughs> and she said the quality of the food will be a reflection of the quality of the kitchen. <laughs> so she was wise. She knew how us farmers think. And, uh, and here we are. So preparing for change. And, and change is funny. I remember I, I went for the interview for an upfield scholarship. And I remember my dad saying to me, he said, Andrew, you, you know, we, we probably won't, you probably won't get one. Our, our farm is not that impressive. Uh, it's just a normal farm and we're just trying to do some, you know, grow our business. And he, he was a little bit concerned that our farm wasn't the standout farm. But the thing about Nuffield is it's not about the standout farm, it's about the character of the people that get Nuffield scholarships. And then what they can do for their industry and what they can do for their country and how they can transform agriculture. And uh, after the interview, after I thought I'd completely made a hash of it, uh, that night, Max Gelbar, for those of you who know Max, uh, rang me up and he said, prepare for your life to change. I thought, that's a bit of an overstatement, Max, really. I mean, the scholarship's something, but I didn't think things were going to change that much. Uh, but it does. It changes you. Uh, and, uh, and things have changed. I mean, um, a while ago, 7th of uh, September 2013, I was elected in the Australian Parliament. I went up to the door of the Australian Parliament, the polls hadn't quite been declared because I had to be Liberal and Labor to win the seat of Mallee. And I knocked on the door and the guard said, uh, no, no, we're not open yet, you can't come in. And I said, I think I've just been elected. <laughs> he said, I'm right, Jerome, come on in, come on in. <laughs> and then, no, I said, this is the unique part about the Australian Parliament system, that you can come from man on the street, or woman on the street, to having a say in how your country is run. And I remember the first week in Parliament, still trying to work out how to tie a tie. I actually wore my knuckle tie for my maiden speech. Uh, and, uh, and then I went home, back to the farm, after I'd been in a suit and tie, mixing with the politician, and being called sir, and all this sort of stuff. And then keyholed 150 shitty lambs, uh, you know, uh, getting ready for market. So uh, I wondered, you know, how many politicians uh, were doing that. But things have changed. Uh, a few days ago I went back to the farm and uh, had to mouth out some crossbred ewes because it's been pretty dry in Victoria and uh, I got a blister. <laughs> I got a blister. Uh, it becomes soft. Uh, but it is important I think that we do have people with an affinity for agriculture and, and I want to say that governments are not there to make you innovative. But we're there to empower you. Okay? We're not there to make you innovate 
but we're there to make to empower you. It was something that I was discussing with Joel Fitzgibbon as we were driving down here. And I remember one of the great things of my Nuffield scholarship is, and uh, I remember if, if Dave Bullard might remember this because he was there. We went to northern France and we had some really good translators. And here was the most subsidised agricultural country in the world in northern France. And there were Australians, uh, I'd say the second least subsidised country, and then of course some Kiwi scholars with us who were the least subsidised. And even in those two completely different worlds, one with you know, the common agricultural policy, what so many farmers in Australia say, well, if only the government had subsidised the farmers, and there were the free marketeers of the New Zealanders. And even with the two farming systems, the top 20% of producers were making money. The bottom 20% of producers were going broke, and the other 60% of producers were bouncing along with the seasons. And it made me really confront what is the role of government policy as it interacts with your business. And essentially, it's financial literacy, it's attitude to risk, uh, it's aspirations. And the great thing that we can do if we really want to drive productivity for Australian agriculture is lift the next 20% of producers up into the top 20% of producers. And that's the role of Nuffield. That's the role that you take. So you go back after seeing the world, after seeing what's going on in global agriculture, and your interaction with your neighbours, your interaction with your communities, drives change. It drives systems. It drives the way people look at their business. And I still remember when I got back from the plane, I come back from Nuffield, I landed and my father came and picked me up and I said, uh, well, look, I think there's a great demand for protein. We need to move out of the wool industry, sorry, if you're the wool industry, and move into prime lamb and make these changes. And this is what's going on with different parts of the world. And I can see great opportunities in biotechnology and everything. And my dad said, oh, Andrew, he said, uh, Mal up the road dug a dam last week. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's been a challenge, you know. You go on this great journey, you have to bring others on the lessons that you've learned. But the role of government, as I said, is not to make you innovative, it's to empower you. And the one thing I've noticed about my travels is that stability and anti-corruption are important uh, to giving confidence for people to grow, grow crops and know they can plant crops. Uh, and so even bad government, uh, as long as it's stable, is better than unstable government. We've only got to look at the challenges in Syria at the moment. Agriculturally rich, but uh, in a real mess. Uh, keeping the sea lanes open. I mean, people ask me in uh, Mildura, why did I go over and have conversations with the uh, congressman in Washington a few weeks ago? Well, everything that's produced out of Mildura in shipping containers goes through the South China Sea. We have, as an Australian government, uh, defence capabilities based in Malaysia. We work with the Americans to keep the sea lanes open. This is important. It's important for our commerce. Uh, biosecurity. You know, we take it for granted that we can attract those premiums, but because of strong and robust biosecurity, uh, we can do that. Free trade agreements. We talked about being the belly of Asia. Ultimately, our end game is that we get to pick some of the premium markets. We're never ever going to produce food uh, for the masses out of Australia because the masses can't afford to pay for it. But what we can do is produce high value food. And frankly, I'm going to play a little bit of politics here. It is deplorable that there's not a united front on the free trade agreement with China. And don't think you can just re rehash it because if you rehash it, the Chinese will say they'll be offended and the, the deal will be off. And we've actually done very well with that. The management of water resources is essential. I keep on making the strong premise that you won't have irrigated agriculture if the person who is taking the risk and putting the endeavour uh, can't tip water on the ground and produce something for a profit. And we need to be very mindful of that, and that's why we drove a very hard bargain this week to get agriculture uh, having water back into that portfolio, just for that attitudinal change. And we have to create the infrastructure to get our products to the market. Legislation about you know, empowering genetics, endpoint royalties, copyright, and access to affordable labour. These things are the role of government. So they're there to empower you to be innovative. 
<coughs> even things like an open skies policy. Now, in 1982, uh, people will remember this, we had the drought of 82 and people were lining up and shooting sheep. We were exporting to 12 countries. Sheep meat was worth nothing much. Even through the dry years, one of the things that helped us through the dry years of the last, uh, you know, the late 2000s was we had good prices even for mutton. And even, I did mouth out these ewes the other day and I sold some fat ewes with no teeth for $110 for mutton. And you know the big thing that's changed is that we are now exporting to over 96 countries with sheep meat, not 12. And because we have an open skies policy, which is a government policy around regulation of airways, uh, we can take cuts of meat that weren't worth anything, uh, halves, livers, wrap them up, and they'll be in the UAE in 24 hours. And for anyone who lives in Adelaide, I was talking to the CEO of Etihad Airways uh, a while ago when I was in uh, the UAE. Uh, not Etihad, Emirates, sorry. And they said the only reason they fly out of Adelaide is not because they have the passenger numbers, but because they can make it up in agricultural freight. So you get to understand that the role of government does interact very much with the role of producers. We're not there to make you innovative. You will do that. Nuffield will do that. Uh, and that's the challenge, I think, for you. But we're there to help create the framework to empower you. Now, you cannot empower people. You cannot have that framework with restrictive labour markets. You cannot do it with an anti-free trade agreement agenda. You cannot do it with an anti-irrigation agenda. Uh, and you cannot do it with an anti-native vegetation agenda that means it's so hard for you to be innovative on your farm. Uh, something I discussed with Joel on the way was about natural resources. And he made the comment to me that uh, missed productivity is a waste of natural resources. Now, I'm not sure I quite agree with that. Agriculture is a wonderful profession to be in. And sure, the government <coughs> wants you to produce exports. Because if you produce exports, we clip the ticket, we get more wages. And that's great. But there's also something else about agriculture that I think is a little bit deeper than that. There's a sense of values and rewards by working with nature. I think it's important governments understand this. It isn't just about exports. Agriculture isn't just about money. Agriculture is partly, or in a lot of ways for a lot of people, about living a life that they can feel very satisfied with because they've produced a very honest living. They've taken the resources of rain, taken the resources of water at the irrigators, taken the resources of land and taken the resources of sunshine produce something very honestly and hopefully in doing so have contributed back to making the world that they live in and their, their own farms a more beautiful and sustainable place. And so I just want to say uh, as a representative of the Australian Government, thank you for what you do. Uh, you do produce exports for the nation but you also manage the land of <coughs> Australians uh, and I think hopefully you gain those values that comes with working with God's creation. Thank you. Let's enjoy some custard.